Hoorah! Hello, I'm Zach here and welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas! So as you probably gathered from the title, this is my Christmas special video and believe you me, it was super tight to make. I am literally recording this voiceover right now at 11 o'clock at night on the 23rd. Yeah. So, <laughs> the following story you're going to hear me tell was one that I literally wrote in one sitting. Like, I legit wrote it, like, just now. <laughs> and after listening back on the recording, <laughs> oh my god, is, uh, <clears throat> pretty cheesy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoy it in some way. So, <laughs> here it is. The story titled, Tia's Christmas. Because I couldn't come up with a better name. <laughs> Today was the day. Christmas. Tia had been preparing all month for Christmas. She planned every hour, down to the littlest detail, to make it, as she called it, the very bestest Christmas ever. Tia, of course, always looked forward to Christmas every year, but this year was especially special. Her older brother, Jake, was coming home. Tia hadn't seen her brother in two years. As they were born ten years apart, Jake had left home to study abroad when Tia was only eight. It was hard for her. She had always had an older brother, and when Jake left, she was suddenly an only child. And the fact that the two siblings were always very close certainly didn't help Tia cope with the sudden absence. Growing up, Jake had always made sure every day of Tia's life felt magical, even in some small way. Her days would always start with Jake lifting her high up into the air until she was taller than their dad. They called it her morning flight to prepare her for the day. And when they got home from school, they would spend hours playing games that Jake often came up with himself. And on weekends, they would play role-playing games, for which Jake would build props for them to use. Tia's favorite part was always the stories that were entangled within these such games. Jake would decorate his bedroom to resemble different scenes for the main characters to explore. The main characters, of course, being Tia and himself. The props were nothing more than boxes, glitter, and lots of glue. But Jake had a way of telling stories that felt so believable that Tia would get lost in wonder as they discovered cardboard gems and fought cloth monsters they called Omlings. Tia always couldn't wait for the weekend because that was when Jake would redecorate his room and they could play the next chapter of the story. To Tia, her older brother was a wizard capable of sweeping her into incredible new worlds. That was until the day when he couldn't take her with him. As Tia's parents had put it, Jake had grown up and it was time for him to leave home. And this left Tia feeling incredibly empty. She understood why her brother had to leave and she understood that it was the right thing for him. But she couldn't understand why she still felt so sad. Without her brother, her days felt ordinary and bland. Sure, she had friends at school, and her parents were pretty alright, she thought. But all the magic that was present when her brother was around seemed to have been swept away with him. And that's why Tia was so looking forward to this day. The day when her brother would finally be home for Christmas. He was supposed to come every year, but there was always something that got in the way. But this year, Jake had promised Tia that he would be home. She was so excited as she jumped out of bed. She went to a little box on her desk and smiled. It was THE box. The box that was identical to the one her brother had. It was the box where she would keep their favorite ornament when it was her year to have it. It was a little tradition the two of them had, where, every year, they would give the shiny red ornament to the other person, who would then keep it until next Christmas. Tia's box had been empty two years in a row, because her brother had taken the ornament with him when he left. She didn't really mind that part, though. She was glad Jake had their ornament with him while he was away. But finally, it would be back in her box. Tia left her room and went over to their Christmas tree in the living room. It was brightly lit, and under it was stocked full of gifts. Technically, they were supposed to be opening the gifts first thing in the morning, but Tia wanted to wait until her brother came home. 
She had worked all month making something special for Jake, which was now nicely wrapped up and nestled under the tree. And just as she was about to smile again, pop, the lights on the tree went out. Dad, Tia called out. After looking, her dad told her that the lights had burned out. Tia couldn't believe it. What kind of Christmas had an unlit tree? But she finally calmed herself down and started cheering herself up by reminding herself that Jake was coming home soon. She went to the kitchen to start baking. She planned to make candy cane cake, as it was her and her brother's favorite Christmas treat. Her mother had taught her how to make it last year, and now she wanted to make it herself. She tied on her apron and got her whisk before realizing something. Something that was missing. Where's the candy canes? Tina asked her parents. Her mother responded in surprise, saying that she thought Tia's father had gotten them from the store. But then Tia's dad responded, saying that he thought Tia's mom was supposed to get them. And so the two parents continued back and forth at each other into an argument, leaving Tia with nothing to do but to go back to the living room feeling really disappointed. She wouldn't be able to bake because all the stores were closed, so they wouldn't be able to get any candy canes. And now her parents were arguing on Christmas. She wanted to cry, but again, the thought that her brother would be coming home soon cheered her up a bit. Almost as soon as she was in good spirits again, the phone rang, and Tia's parents paused their argument so that Tia's mom could pick it up. Oh, hi, Jake, her mom said happily. This immediately perked up Tia, and she waited as her mom continued to listen. But slowly, her mom's expression changed, from happy to disappointed, and after saying, I see. Well, let's just hope it all clears up soon. Tia's mom hung up the phone and explained that Jake's flight was delayed due to the snow, and unless it cleared up, he wouldn't make it. And almost immediately, the two parents began a new argument about flights and deadlines and other adulty things that Tia couldn't understand. But at this moment, she didn't even try to. She was in shock. She ran to her room and locked the door. Then she went over to her window and looked out at the snow. Her very best as Christmas ever wasn't turning out great at all. So far, everything she planned had gone wrong. She sat in her room looking out her window for hours, and as each hour passed and her brother never called back, she got sadder and sadder. As the sun set and her parents had finally stopped arguing, Tia heard something coming from the living room. It was a sort of scratchy sound. She crept out of her room and walked over to find her dog, Beaky, gnawing on something. Something that used to be wrapped under the tree. Tia's eyes opened wide when she realized it was the sweater she had knitted for Jake. She managed to get it out of her tail-wagging dog's jaws, but the damage was done. There was a gaping hole right in the middle. At that, all the tears that Tia was holding back couldn't be held back anymore. She got up and ran out of the house with tears streaking her cheeks. Why did this have to happen today, she thought over and over again. She was so happy, so excited. She had planned everything perfectly, and yet everything was ruined. She ran until she got too tired, and then just looked up at the stars. Up in the mountains where she lived, they shined so brightly, and the sky was so clear that for one tiny moment, the beauty of it had taken Tia out of her sadness. If there was one thing, just one thing that would have made the tree, the cake, mom and dad, and even the sweater all right, it would be if her brother was there. But as she continued to look at the night sky, more tears welled up as she knew that by now, there was no way he was coming. With no more energy to run, she walked, looking down at her feet until something caught her eye. There was something shining in the snow up ahead, but she couldn't make out what it was. Curious, she walked towards it and eventually saw what it was. It was a little branch of an evergreen tree stuck into the ground and covered in bright Christmas lights. Where in the world did that come from, Tia thought. It was like magic. Then she noticed something hanging on the branch. Her eyes widened as she realized what it was. She walked a little closer. There was no mistake. It was the ornament. The ornament. 
the shiny red ornament that Jake had taken away with him. Merry Christmas, T, a voice said from behind Tia. She spun around, and there, standing in the snow, with his hands in his pockets, and wearing that crooked smile that Tia would recognize anywhere, was her brother. Jake! Tia said, as she, with newfound energy, ran into her brother's arms. He lifted her high up into the air, just like he always used to do, and then settled her back on the ground. Oof, you're getting pretty heavy there, T. Tia had a million questions and things to tell him that they all sort of came running out of her mouth at the same time, until Jake finally quieted her down and brushed the snow off a log for them to sit down. Tia explained everything that had happened in exact, unfortunate detail. And on top of all that, Mom and Dad didn't even help at all. All they could do was argue all day. They didn't care at all about how I felt, Tia ended. Jake chuckled a little. Yeah, well, family can be dysfunctional sometimes. But that's what makes it family, don't you think? Tia was confused, so Jake continued. We argue, we get on each other's nerves. We can even really hurt each other sometimes. But under all that, we still care for each other. <laughs> Maybe it's because we know that no matter what, we'll always forgive each other, that we're even able to work up the courage to bring up such unpleasant things. Or to go away and leave our little sisters at home alone. Tia looked up at her brother surprised, and he looked down at her. I may not always be around anymore, T. But that doesn't mean we're not brother and sister anymore. As long as I care about you, and you care about me, then it doesn't matter how far apart we are. We'll still be family. Because that's what family is. A big dysfunctional mess that loves each other no matter what. <laughs> and just like that, everything that had been weighing Tia down ever since Jake left was lifted. It was like her brother had been secretly with her these past two years, and understood everything she was going through. And with that, she got up and proudly said, you really are a wizard, Jake! After lifting a confused eyebrow, Jake got up and rolled with it. Yes, but a tired one, as this wizard has traveled for many thousands of miles on an empty stomach. I must now refuel with some homemade ham. I trust you all have still saved me some. Tia laughed and explained that they saved their big dinner for today so that he could join. Wait, you mean it's fresh? Jake said excitedly before running towards the house with a Woohoo! What an awesome Christmas! Tia ran after him laughing. An awesome Christmas? What about the burnout lights? Tia called out. I'll show you how you can make some cool jewelry out of the old bulbs, he replied. And the cake? Tia tried again. I'll still be here tomorrow. We can grab some candy canes and bake it together. There was one last thing, and no way her brother could make something good out of that, Tia thought. What about the nod on sweater? Well, it'll definitely make an interesting keepsake. Not to mention a funny story to tell my roommates. Ha, huh, Tia thought. He couldn't make something good out of it. But to her surprise, her brother continued. I'll wear it and tell them... Jake turned and smiled at his sister. That I got attacked by a huge omling, and my little sister saved me just in time. Tia was speechless and tears began welling up in her eyes again. But this time, it was because she couldn't contain her joy. This was the very bestest Christmas ever. Her brother had brought the magic back to her Christmas, and this time, she knew that that magic would be with her forever. Yep. Ah, the cringe. Yeah, so had I had the time, I probably would have gotten people to help me with the voice acting because I apparently suck. <laughs> but what can you do? Jake will now forever sound like Zakira trying to be cool. <laughs> well, now I guess I'll take a couple seconds to chat about this illustration. I really had no clue what to draw for my Christmas special video, and that's actually why it was done digitally instead of traditionally, even though it would have really been nice to do a nice, like, traditional piece. That way I could have decorated my desk and stuff for the video, but nope. <laughs> I was so squeezed for time that I thought I would have to cancel making this video. Uh, that's actually why I already wished you all a Merry Christmas in my last video, in case that this video never got made. 
uh, but I had a couple hours yesterday, so I just grabbed my laptop and started drawing with no clue what would come of it. I ended up going with this blocky, angular, painterly style that I actually ended up quite liking. It was really refreshing to just take a step back and just draw without, you know, planning every little detail, which I like. That is, that's me. <laughs> I plan every little detail usually. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. I'll definitely be revisiting this style because uh, it was it was fun to do. Uh, and after a while into the painting, I began realizing that I didn't have any Christmas elements in it. And so I went through this like cute little branch tree thing, um, and the story just sort of came out of it. Yep. <laughs> There was also kind of like a heart-stopping moment when I realized, like halfway through the illustration, that I accidentally set my canvas to 72 dpi. Like, I was like, oh my god, what did I do? What did I do? So I like changed it to 350 dpi, and I tried to like smooth out the edges so that it wouldn't look pixely when you zoomed in, but I couldn't do that for the stars, so <laughs> if you zoom in a lot, the stars are like pixely-ish and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> it's so sad. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what I was able to do in such a short amount of time. I mean, I definitely like the drawing more than the story, but yeah. <laughs> Well, that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it in any way, <laughs> and if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to pass me a Christmas present, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, links to my social media pages are in the description box where you can follow me for daily updates. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. Merry Christmas!